Now, Jason Perlmutter, you have, uh, I guess, got a budding career in, in unearthing a lot of rare and uh, heretofore you know, forgotten acts from North and South Carolina. You had been a producer for the Carolina Funk compilation of uh, two or three years back, as well as the, the new disc. But um, tell us a little bit about uh, your understanding of, of what was going on in, in this immediate area, especially. Well, uh, my background, as you say, is as a collector of this music, and I've just been really excited to, to search for local recordings that may not have been commercially successful and for that reason are now hard to find. There were a lot of great bands who m perhaps only made one song on a 45. Maybe it was part one and part two or the same song on both sides. Some of these bands disappeared as recording artists and didn't get past that. And so there are lots of records, one, one or two song records by great bands that aren't really that well storied. For instance, on the Carolina Funk compilation from a few years ago, there was a great Spartanburg band called Mongoose from the mid 1970s. I don't think they were very long lived, but they were a very funky band and also had a, a soul side to their style as well. And their record now is, is hard to get, a 1975 release called King Cobra and Feel It's For Real. And you can hear that on Carolina Funk, but that's one of many records from the area. And it turned out that Mongoose was a spinoff of a group called Devil's Pet Shop, an R&B group from here in town that in turn was a spinoff of the Yakety Yaks who had provided the theme song for, um, for uh, David Lee's record shop, Washington Sound. And, Shelby, which was in business from the early 1970s through late 1980s. But this group, the Yakety Yaks, had a huge horn section, had a multi-part review with dancers and singers, and were really popular by all accounts in this area as an R&B group from the early 1960s through the early 1970s when groups like Devil's Pet Shop and Mongoose started breaking off from them. But it turned out that they were a great training ground for, for the horn players that would be featured in these later groups. But the Yakety Yaks now, in turn, this earlier group that seems to have been the nucleus of R&B in Spartanburg, uh, provide the lead-off track, Soul Night, part one of Soul Night, which is on Said I Had a Vision, the new release on my label, Paradise of Bachelors, the label that my partner, Brendan Greaves, and I have launched to put out the history of David Lee's music. Well, it's really great to be here with everybody tonight. And it's really, really wonderful that everybody here on the panel has that relevance and, and is still very active. And, and Paul, uh, of course, we, you know, got your big splash with Marshall Tucker Band, but you've also got a record coming out in the spring, and that's with Watson's Riddle. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, we're talking, we're tidying it up uh, with Sony, uh, a, a small label called Palmetto Records. There's mostly straight ahead jazz artists on the label, but we're not remotely like anything on the label, which I like because it seems like I've always been the different egg in the in the basket. So. Once again, we're the different egg in the basket, but uh, it's a it's a straight edit. It's an instrumental groove record. It's an instrumental pop record, really, is what it is. It's with Steve Watson and Chuck Lavelle's playing piano, so uh, it, it was really a lot of fun to do. It took us about a year with everybody's schedule and, and to get together to do it, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Did it here in Spartanburg and recorded it in Inman at uh, Studio 151, Timmy Lauder and, and Rusty Milner at their studio, and, and uh, there again, if you got good ears and equipment of any kind, you can you can make a good record. You know, mm -hmm. so those guys are great. So we had a, we had a ball doing it. So it's fun. Now, Joe, you and the Sparkle Tones are doing some gigs now too, right? We're not out of the picture so far. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, I'm 71 now, and the youngest was uh, four years younger than me. I was the oldest guy. And uh, yeah, we're going back to Vegas and play in April the 20th. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to put y'all on the spot. Do you have any favorite uh, new acts? Anybody in the you know that's fresh off the, you know, in the past decade or something like that from the region? Any 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 names that pop to mind? <laughs> the antibodies we've got. Worst about names. Belleville, I'm certainly. Belleville outfit. You know, yep. Yeah. God, I mean, there's uh, the name someone. There's so many player again. There's so many great artists around. Uh, Joe Dean Haywood. Joe uh, was a uh, '50s guy. He sang Sam Cooke better than Sam Cooke. Okay. He was really good. Yeah. 
And we got a uh, comment coming in online about uh, the juggernaut, radio juggernaut back in the day was uh, W-A-Y-S, A-M. How supported were they of upstate and Piedmont artists? Anybody got anything? Got anything to say on that? I, I know I'm David Lee, but I, I know that I called on them, but, you know, they was kind of out of my range. Big ways. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so oh, big ways. Big ways, yeah. And Charlotte. Yep. Oh, I never had a pickup on them. Yeah. Sure did. Never had a pickup. I was thinking about it up in Rutherford County. Hmm. Well, we're going to take a break now and go back to some more music from the antibodies. Uh, stay in tune at linguamusicalive.com. You can comment there just under the live feed of the video. You can also go on to Twitter and use the hashtag, which is a pound sign, and Lingua Musica in your tweet, and we'll get to see it here and add your comments. We're going to come back after this song break and talk a little bit about rare vinyl, out of print vinyl, and LPs in general. Now we give it back to the antibodies. <laughs> Pull up beside me in a blue Cadillac, drag lightly upon his cigarette. So what kind of imagination do you possess? I said, why don't you just put the damn thing out? Have you come for me? Have you come for me? Have you come for me? I've been waiting for you. Have you come for me? Have you come for me? Have you come for me? Thank you. Across the way, speeds along the street to complacency. Curses and spits profits from the machine. Have you come for me? Thank you. Thanks very much to the antibodies and the Pulse Dancers. Cooking and sounding, very good. 
All right, what was that show that used to come on when we were real young? Hullabaloo. Was that it? We had the go-go dance. Wasn't that right? Wayne, what was that show? You know what I'm talking about? No, no. <laughs> they had the go-go dancers and stuff. And Dave Clark Vibe would play and all those bands. And they had the go-go dancers up in the thing. That's what that reminds me of. It's awesome. Huh. That was Shindig. 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 That but wasn't there a show called Hullabaloo? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. My memory <laughs> serves. Right. There, there you go. <laughs> the what? Dave Clark oh, really? Five is Boy, his first. I mean, my first one John Thompson says Dave Clark Five is his Woo! first concert. That's like another interesting <laughs> conversation right there. Your first concert. James Brown. James Probably Brown. Memorial Auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Joe? Mother's finest in the late '60s. <laughs> I haven't seen very much. <laughs> you were up on stage a long time before that. You were playing all the time, Joe. <laughs> That's right. Joe was looking the other way out. How, how, about, how about you, David? Craig McFadden. I tell you, I tell you, whenever he got on the stage, all he had to do was mumble, cause the people be making so much noise till you couldn't. He was very popular. I never seen anything like that in my life. Same thing with Sam Cooke. They oh, had man. to take people out from keep them from dancing in the floor. They didn't like you dancing the Coliseum back then. Yeah, they they carry you out. <laughs> so they carry them out doing Sam Cooke. Sam Cooke had on white all over. Had a white, white necktie, white shirt, white pants, and white shoes, white socks. I tell you, that, he didn't that sing white. Oh, <laughs> he sure didn't sing white. <laughs> He sung hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he sung hard. Yeah. All right, on the spot, Jason, your first concert. It was REM at the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill. Oh. It was November 10th of 94, 95, something like that. Oh, yeah. A youngster wow. in the bunch. Youngsters. Babies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, speaking of days gone by, actually not so much uh, you know, in the past anymore, vinyl, uh, records, you know, kind, of a, kind of a niche market. They're, they're selling you know, what, a million, two million uh, LPs every year nowadays. So uh, vinyl records, the, really the only medium that has persevered for, what, over a century now. Everything else that's fallen by the wayside, you know, A-track tapes, tapes, uh, even CDs now sort of falling off the map. We're going to be talking a little bit about especially rare and out-of-print vinyl from the region and beyond, and everybody likes to take a trip through their record collections. Uh, uh, anybody out there that has a record collection is, is going to like to thumb through it, and there's, there's nothing quite like the, the sort of sensory experience of being able to look at something that's large enough and has the sort of the, the aesthetic of LPs. Yeah, I miss all the liner notes and the pictures and opening yeah. it up and looking at it. I love that. Yeah. So uh, anybody in, in your collections, you, you got anything that's, that's worth something? I, I, I'm sure Jason does. I, I'm one of these guys that I just get free stuff. I work in radio, and so you know, I, I just sort of take what comes my way, so I don't really have much to amount to anything. Sad story for me. I lost everything in a fire, and I had records that I had since I was 10 years old. I'd save my grass cutting money and go buy my record every week you know and and uh and they were immaculate i had i had categories within categories but anyway i lost it all so i'm still i'm still trying to find things i had and i can't remember until i see it a lot of times so anyway but i wish i had my record collection back right. the places where the tones have been playing um around the world actually in england and germany we've been there within the past five years and so forth you will not believe the amount of acetate being sold at those places. I mean, you ask yourself, why are they doing this? And I guess the reason is they want to hear needle against plastic or something. But boy, they were selling that plastic, uh, the acetate albums left and right in all those places.